In this Autodesk Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you an applied example of making a living hinge for a laser cutter. This will show you how to make the part and have it interact with other parts, then lay it flat for cutting on the laser cutter. And then it has a curved top, but there are finger joints to intersect with the living hinge portion and the sides. Let's get started to do this. First, click Modify and then Change Parameters. We need to add some user parameters. The first one will be Ply, and then the expression will be three, and this is our material thickness. Then we're gonna make another user parameter called gap. This will be six millimeters. This is the gap in between the slats on our laser cut pattern. Then we're gonna make ideal slat thick. This is the ideal thickness for our pattern. It'll be 1.5. Then we'll make another one. This will be hinge height. This will eventually be a driven parameter. So we'll just put a placeholder of 70 for now. Then we'll add a new parameter, and this is important to make this no units. Then we're gonna call this num slats. And for the expression, we're gonna say round, two parentheses, hinge height, divided by ideal slat thick, then close parentheses, divided by two, close parentheses again, times two. What this does is divide the hinge height by what the perfect slat thickness is, divides it by two, times it by two, and then that gives us an even number. And then we're going to make another one, and this is going to be called slat thick. This is the actual thickness of our slats, and this will be hinge height divided by num slats. So now we have that value, and notice this is a unitless value. We need one more value. It's going to be inner width, and we'll make this 160. Now we have the user parameters we need to get started. I'm going to create a component. This component will be side. Then I'm gonna create an offset plane. I'll click on this plane on the origin. It'll be inner width divided by two. Then I'll create a sketch right on that construction plane. I'm gonna get a rectangle, draw my rectangle out. I'm gonna get the midpoint of this line right on the origin. Then I'm gonna dimension this rectangle will be 90. And then I'm gonna make it again. 90. Let's zoom out. I'm going to get a three point arc. Click on the top and then the bottom. Make sure it's tangent right there. I'm going to click this line, make it a construction line. Then I'm going to draw a line up through the middle. Also make that a construction line. Now I'm going to draw some rectangles. I'll click, have a rectangle extend out here. Then I'll click, have a rectangle extend out here. I want to make sure these two are collinear which they are now. I'll dimension this to be ply. Then this one will be 20. And I'll make this one 20 as well, but I'm gonna click on this dimension so it's driven. Now I wanna space these evenly. So I'm gonna get a line and I'm gonna draw up from the midpoint. And then I'm gonna draw over to here. Make sure that's perpendicular in both places. So click here and here, perpendicular. Then I'm gonna draw from this midpoint to this midpoint. And then once again, I'm gonna come down to the bottom, draw over, then I'm gonna draw up to the midpoint. If you miss like this, just click the point, then coincident and click the line. And it looks like it's not on the midpoint, so I'll make sure I click that. And now it's on the midpoint. We wanna make each of these be construction lines. So just press X after you select them. Click on that line, press X. And then click on these two lines and press X. We want these to be equal, so I'll click equals this line and that line. And then I'll click on this line and that line. Now these little tabs are centered on our spacing. Next, we'll create a mirror and I'll click this line, this line, and this line, not that point. And then I'll also click these three lines down here. And then the mirror line will be this line right here. And then I'll press OK. Then we can finish our sketch. Next is an extrude. So I will press E. I'll click this profile. And then I'm going to get the little tabs on there too. And then our distance will be ply. And we'll say OK. Then we're going to go up to the top level, create a new component. And this will be side two. I'm going to create another construction plane. From here, it will be negative inner width divided by two. 
Then I'll create a sketch on the outside of this plane. I'll press P to project in the first side, then press E to extrude, and it will be negative ply. So now we have these two pieces, and we'll go back up to the top level component. And now we're ready to create our sheet metal flange for the living hinge on the laser cutter. So we need to make a rule, so click Modify Sheet Metal Rules, and then you need an eighth inch plywood rule. You can go to a default rule and just click this plus button. You need a thickness of three, and the bend conditions will be 10 millimeters. So then we put close, and we need a place to make our flange. So I'm going to create a new component. It will be a sheet metal component, and make sure you pick the eighth inch plywood for your rule. Click OK. I'm going to create a sketch on the origin plane. Press P to project. And what I want is sketch entities. I want this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece. Actually, I don't need these two pieces, but I need the top one there, and then I need these two dots on the bottom. I'll press OK. Then I'm going to get my line tool and connect these. Press Escape, get L again, connect them, finish my sketch, and I'm going to orbit so you can see I have this arch right here. We're going to create a flange. I'm going to click this section, this section, and this section. Then our direction will be symmetric, and our distance will be inner width divided by 2 plus 2 ply. And that makes sure it goes over the edges there. We'll press OK. While we're inside this component, we want to click on Solid. And then we're going to modify. We're going to do a combine. The target body will be our flange. The tool bodies will be the two sides we made. And we want to keep the tools. We'll press OK. So now you can see our flange has pieces cut out of it. Now we're ready to unfold. So go back to sheet metal. Then we will click Modify, Unfold. I'm going to click this face right here. And then it unfolds. We want to create a sketch right on the front of this. Then we're going to press P to project. We want to get these four dots on the corners. One, two, three, four. Press OK. I can now hide the body, and I'm going to hide the sides too, just so everything's clear. We want to draw some lines, and we will draw from this point to this point, then from this point to this point, and then we're going to go in the middle on the midpoint and draw straight across. We're going to select these lines, press X to make them construction lines. So now they're all construction lines. We're going to draw a few more lines. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to start over on the edge and draw a line here. And then that's not horizontal. Make sure you click the horizontal constraint. I'm going to draw another line from here to here. And then I'm going to draw a line from here to here. I'm going to dimension the inside of these as gap. Remember that's six millimeters. It's the gap in between the slats. And then this will also be gap. Then this distance here to the outside will be 0.5. And then on the other side, if for whatever reason this isn't over, just pull it over, press D, then click this point and this point, label it 0.5. And then we can make all of these equal. So we'll click the equal constraint. You can click on these and then make sure that they are equal. So now they're all centered. We need to draw two more lines. So I'll click L, draw straight across, press escape, then press L, draw straight across. We want to make these collinear. Then we want to dimension from the inside point to here, gap. Then we want to dimension the center area as gap. And then we want to dimension from here to here and make sure you go straight down as gap. Next, we'll use the equal constraint again. We'll click here and here. Those are now equal and they will be centered. Now we need to know the slat thickness, but to do that, we need to calculate. So I'll press D, click this bottom point, then come up to the top and I'll click this inside one, go straight out. Fusion gives us a warning that says it's over constraining the sketch. We want a driven dimension. Then we go back to modify change parameters. So we can see this dimension here. As of January 2022, you can use driven dimensions in parameters, but with this calculation, it doesn't work. You can use simple calculations, but this is just too much. And so what we need to do is actually type it in uh, by hand the way we used to have to do it. So just 
on hinge height type 145.519. Then that calculates how many slats we need, 98, and the actual thickness of them. So press OK. Then we can dimension from this line to this line, and it'll be slat thick. Perfect. Now we just need to create a mirror, and we're going to mirror these top lines. And if you're having trouble clicking, just click and hold, and then you can select which one you want. And then sometimes you can just get it. Then I'm going to do the mirror line, and the mirror line will be this line. We'll say OK. So we're not done yet, but we're going to finish this sketch. So now that we have the sketch finished, we're going to create a new sketch. We'll click the same plane. Then we'll press P to project. We need to project this geometry in, so Fusion has less calculations to do per sketch. Click and hold, then select the line you want. Click and hold, select the line you want. And then we got to get the one over here. Click and hold, select the line you want. And then this one, then we got to get the three on the bottom. So we'll click and hold. It's this one, and then click and hold that one there, and then one last line, click and hold, and then select it. Press OK. I'm going to hide the original sketch, and then we just need to make a rectangular pattern. So we'll click Create, Rectangular Pattern. We need one, two, three, four, five pieces. We're going to do distance type is going to be spacing, not extent, spacing. Then we're going to just pull straight down. Our distance will be negative slat thick times two. And then the quantity will be num slats divided by two. And if we press OK, that should perfectly work out all the way down to the bottom. And notice that they're evenly spaced because of the calculations we did. You could draw these in by hand, but then they might not be perfectly spaced. So then we'll go ahead and finish our sketch. The next thing we want to do is hide that sketch, show the body again, and create a new sketch right on the body. And then we're going to press P to project, and we want to click Bodies. So we just get the whole body, and then we'll press OK. Then we can hide that body again. We'll press E to extrude. We'll click this face, and this one, and this one. And then we're going to go negative ply. And it's going to be make sure you have new body selected. So then this is body two. We're going to use this when we arrange our piece. Then we can go ahead and refold our faces. And as you can see here, this is now refolded. We can hide that one for a bit, but we'll just leave it there because we're going to use this to do the arrange command. We can show our sides again. Then we're ready to go to the manufacturer workspace. The first thing we'll do here is click setup and then create a manufacturing model. And then we'll right click on that and edit the manufacturing model. The next thing we'll do is create a sketch on the ground plane, and we'll draw a rectangle. We're not going to dimension this rectangle because we don't know how big we need our sheet. So we'll click Finish Sketch. Then we're going to click Modify Arrange, and we're going to click these objects. So we'll click this object and this object, and then we will click this object. And then we click our envelopes, and it's this envelope. And now everything is laid down. And now you can see why we added this extra body, because we have to have this folded to be in the manufacturer workspace, but then this allows us to lay that part out. So it's a little cumbersome, but it works great. So then we press OK. And then now we're ready to go ahead and finish this edit. Then we need to create a new setup. So we'll click Setup, New Setup. And when you do this, make sure you're in the Fabrication tab, not Milling. So click Fabrication, then Setup, New Setup. And then for our model, we click on Nothing. And we want this piece, this piece, and that piece. And we say OK. And then we need to make a new 2D profile. So we'll click 2D Profile. And for our tool, we'll select our laser cutter. And then for the geometry for this one, we want to twirl out the manufacturing model, then twirl out component one. This is our bend. Then twirl out the sketches. And we want this sketch. So I can just click the whole sketch. You see that? And then we're going to say OK. And we want this to be its own profile cut because we want to cut all that first before we go on the outside. So when we export that, we can make that as a different layer and cut that first. 
Then we just go cutting, new 2D profile, and now we can just select the object since we have this as the outside piece. Our tool should be selected, so we'll go ahead and click this piece, this piece, and this piece. And then we say OK, and it's calculating. Now you could edit the manufacturing model and make your sketch plane smaller to see what the minimum size you need to arrange everything. But now we're ready to post our process, so we click Post Process. We want to make sure we pick AutoCAD DXF. Label your program here. Choose where you want to save it. Then we want to make sure that we uncheck Include Drill, but make sure we do check Only Cutting. Otherwise, it has different machine movement lines on our file, and we don't want that. And then we definitely want to click Put Operations in Separate Layers. I'll go ahead and click that, and then I'll click Post. When I open this file in Illustrator, we want to click Scale By 100%. And then we want it to be one to one millimeters. Make sure after you select millimeters, it says one. And then you click OK. Then you can see our object here. And if you look at the layers, we have these two layers like this one here. This is just these pieces. So we can go to our laser cutter and use that as our first operation. So this is very convenient for being able to separate out our pattern. Sometimes you need to give this a different color for the laser cutter but you should be able to cut out everything fine and then just make your artboard the size of the material with the artboard tool. So hopefully you're able to add living hinges into your laser cut projects with Fusion 360.